Dear all, I would like to welcome you to our third online webinar dedicated to the cancer precision medicine. My name is Jocelyne Renard and I am product specialist in charge of the French territories for OncoDNA. OncoDNA, the healthcare technology company making precision medicine a reality, aims to lead oncologists worldwide through the best treatment option for each patient individually. We combine advanced comprehensive testing of disease biomarker with a cancer treatment knowledge database, which continuously learns from scientific and medical advances. Today, it's a pleasure to introduce you your, our speaker, Dr. Jean-Philippe Wagner. Dr. Wagner is graduated with a medical oncology specialization from the University of Lyon in France. He also earned a master's degree in genetics and immunology. Since 2012, Dr. Wagner is the medical director and radiation oncologist of the Institut André Dutrex in Dunkerque. He is currently working as oncologist and algologist at the Clinic of Flandre in Dunkerque and at the Hospital Center in Calais. Thank you, Dr. Wagner, to be with us today and to share your nine months experience with our solution. I will speak also quickly in French. Pour ceux et celles qui souhaiteraient poser leurs questions en français à la fin de la présentation du Dr. Wagner, je vous y invite. On vous présentera, on vous répondra avec plaisir en français également. Welcome, Dr. Wagner. We listen to you attentively. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to, for this web, first webinar from Dunkirk. I uh, don't know if everybody knows where is Dunkirk. I will show you on a slide uh, shortly. Um, thank you very much for listening. It's my pleasure to be with you. And I will thank, uh, of course, Jessaline and all the Oncodena staff for uh, inviting me to present a nine months practical experience of Oncodena testing in a private French cancer center. Um, we will see uh, how, how it works for in this private uh, French cancer center, uh, what were the difficulties and the opportunities for our patients. First, I will show you uh, in, a, in a few words and slides uh, what is uh, our institute. The André Dutrex Institute is a private center owned by four radiation oncologists. It's a private community hospital. Uh, it's a, a radiotherapy center with uh, 25 employees. We have uh, two variant true beam accelerators and uh, we are doing every uh, technique in radiotherapy, uh, of course, BMAT, uh, 4D and stereotaxy. At the radiotherapy center, which is near the public hospital of Dunkirk, we have a supportive care unit and an oncology trial unit. Uh, our oncology activity is done uh, in the Clinique de Flandre in Good Care branch. It's about five kilometers from the radiotherapy center. Uh, it's a one day chemotherapy clinic with uh, 600 sessions per month and a full hospitalization facility with 15 beds for emergency and palliative care. The patients we treat in this private uh, cancer center are the same as in the regional comprehensive cancer center, Oscar Lambre, which is about 80 kilometers from our center. Uh, it's uh, by car one hour to two and a half hour uh, when the road is crowded. We treat about uh, 1,000 new cases per year, mostly breast cancer, then prostate, colorectal, head and neck, and uh, 10% uh, for the patients, and all the other tumors, solid tumors, but we don't treat sarcomas, children, lymphomas, and leukemia. For the general organization, uh, our area, if there are two um, oncology facilities, our center, private center, and the general hospital of Dunkirk, which is a public one. Uh, there are two uh, oncologists with uh, one-day clinic, uh, one clinic, about 120 to 150 sessions of chemotherapy per month. The surgery is done uh, in private for 70% of for patients. And uh, we have uh, many tumor boards per month. And, and it's original because they are private and public. Uh, for instance, we have two uh, breast and gynecology tumor boards at the neck two, or urology two, dermatology one, and chest two. Our area here, you have the map, uh, which is published by the National Cancer Institute. Uh, it, sh it shows where there are 
where they are oncology facilities. We are here in the extreme north of uh, France, in Dunkerque. We uh, work also here. And the Regional Cancer Center is, is uh, here. And you know, here there are many, many patient, people than patients. And so it's why there are many uh, oncology centers. Um, we, our area uh, treats about a uh, um, half circle of 50 kilometers. Uh, in this uh, half circle, there are 4,500,000 uh, people to 600,000 people. It depends on the boundaries. Of course, many people uh, uh, not far from Lille will go uh, to Lille. And uh, the other cancer centers are at 80 kilometers from our center. Uh, some words on the French oncology organization. It's important to know when there is an innovative technique or treatment uh, what in, 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 a, in, a, in a country, uh, how this, uh, this uh, organization will uh, have, um, uh, will, uh, have uh, um, uh, I would say, uh, how this innovative uh, techno technology or treatment uh, will um, be uh, in all the French, in the French, uh, in the Fran France or other countries. So uh, you have to know that 30% of the 88 salmon uh, cancer centers are private, private in France, but it's 50% uh, of the 179 radiotherapy centers. Uh, 40 to 50% of the patients are treated in private centers. It's one, um, it's one origin, originality of uh, the French uh, medical system. Uh, about 50 more to 70 percent of the patients are treated uh, in private centers. All patients are 100 percent reimbursed by the National Health Insurance, that is, that is the Caisse d'Assurance Maladie, except for initial surgery when it's done in private practice and for many non-conventional supportive care and hospitalization packages. Um, in uh, almost all cancer centers, private cancer centers, there is a third party payment. So the patients uh, don't have to pay uh, for their um, treatments. But it remains a financial burden. Uh, this is a, um, a results from, uh, from, uh, um, from an association of French uh, patients uh, trying to see how much money uh, is left for the patients who are treated for a breast cancer. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, on more than 3,000 women affected by uh, breast cancer in 2013, in fact, uh, um, the patient have to pay per year 871 euros out of 5,000 5, euros of total annual expend expenditure uh, per patient. What is not paid by the national insurance is some day, days of hospitalization. Uh, there is a, a financial burden for hospitalization, about 20%, which is taken by private uh, assurance. Uh, packages like uh, TV or radio, etc., in the room. And in addition, there, is, there are uh, other treatments that are not reimbursed. Uh, most of these, of these treatments are for supportive care. So our experience, we have begun to, to prescribe and to, to do uh, Oncodeina for uh, testing for, for, for patients since September 2 and 2017. Uh, 17 patients accepted to pay for the Oncodeina testing. There were three males, 14 women. Uh, the mean age is 58. Uh, it's uh, uh, from 42 to 79 uh, years old. And at, with nine months follow-up, in fact, two patients out of the 70 uh, died. Most of the patients are breast cancer, then colorectal cancer. You see pancreas, endometrium, prostate, and lung. And most of the patients had an onco straight and go um, testing, onco deep, onco select for three. The test was performed on average after the uh, between the second and the third line of treatment. At the beginning of our experience, uh, almost all the patients were in fourth 
five, fifth, sixth, seventh line. And gradually, uh, uh, the patients were proposed the test uh, at, at first line, first or second line, as you see at, at, on this slide. Here's the, the, the patient's uh, stage and histology. Uh, just to see you that on, to, to show you that on uh, on the 17 patients, uh, some patients were uh, interesting because all the patients uh, were uh, stage four treat patients at uh, at presentations, but four of them were uh, not uh, were uh, at the beginning of uh, stage stage one or two. Sorry, uh, for instance, a breast cancer PT2 a breast cancer PT1, but lobular, a colorectal cancer who was PT1, but uh, with, metast with uh, uh, metastasis uh, six months later, um, sorry, with, with, six, uh, with metastasis uh, in the liver and in the, in the peritoneal carcinomatis. Here is a table of all the patients I will show you more precisely. But what was interesting uh, in, in, in uh, during this uh, presentation is to is to show you uh, how often I th I think that the test was useful. You have the green uh, the green cases here, where failure means um, the oncodeana testing explained why the patient failed, and you see it's more for most of the patient only five cases. Uh, the test, the test doesn't explain why the patient was uh, was failing, and was it useful? Yes, it was. Uh, most was useful because only one, two, three, four patients. Uh, um, clearly, the test was done too late or didn't uh, show us any advantage of doing it. And um, here you have the uh, the status of the patient. The patient and uh, what what uh, the test uh, allowed me to, to do. Uh, we'll focus on uh, on the on the uh, on the patient where uh, obviously the test does, didn't uh, uh, help for the patient. Rectal cancer. Um, here's the overall survival for the patient uh, from beginning of uh, of, the, of, uh, of diagnosis. Uh, this patient was metastatic, so he had a, a 19 months uh, survival. And the patient, the patient uh, wanted the test uh, uh, in fourth, fifth line of treatment. Uh, he died. He died uh, two months later. And the test doesn't uh, didn't uh, show us uh, any information on treatment we can propose. Um, for instance, this patient, this patient uh, has a, a overall survival for the moment of. For, of uh, more than 150 months and 60 months since the occurrence of metastasis, we make the biopsy on a, on a liver metastasis uh, of uh, the patients, and the test doesn't uh, allow us to to, to change uh, the, the treatment strategy. Um, in fact, uh, most most of the patients uh, showed the. Uh, um, an interest for the for the test the testing uh, here you have uh, for instance I uh, will show you later for this for this patient um, um, a patient with pancreas uh, neuroendocrine tumor uh, and uh, the test showed us that probably on third line we will, we could uh, uh, give her uh, everolimus and uh, metformin I will show you later um, in fact in most of the patient. I could uh, I could propose a, a, another strategy that I would have done uh, without the test. I will show you on four patients, three patients now. Um, just just again, I I, I found the test useful for 70 percent of the patient uh, because uh, because it could um, for me propose another another treatment I would have done. Uh, Without the test, uh, I will focus on uh, with you uh, on four patients. Uh, the first patient I, uh, I proposed the test was was a 45 year old 
women with adenocarcinoma of the right lung. She was a stage four at presentation, T3 and 2 M1 with brain metastasis. She had radiotherapy for brain metastasis. And here is the diagram of, uh, of the, her treatment. TTF means time to treatment failure. The time to treatment failure. And after the radiation therapy of, for the brain, she had uh, a triplet, triplet chemotherapy with primetoxide, carboplatin, bevacizumab, and uh, the treatment worked, worked for eight months. Then uh, nivolumab was available, uh, immunotherapy was able, available in France at this moment. She had a treatment for six months and probably we stopped uh, too early because it was the first patient that was treat, treated with uh, immunotherapy in our center. And uh, perhaps it was, was it a false, a false uh, progression. Then we decided the, this lady had uh, no other metastasis uh, than brain, but brain metastasis were controlled by radiotherapy. So we decided to uh, make a radiation, chemoradiation on the T3 and 2 uh, tumor that was stable. And uh, uh, on this uh, treatment, radiation post weekly paxilitaxel, she had uh, 12 months uh, before treatment uh, failure. So she accepted at this time, she, she accepted the, to, to pay for the test. Um, some people, uh, as you probably don't know, uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk is not a very rich area, and uh, the problem is uh, is to propose a test, which is uh, quite expensive at the moment, to patients that uh, have no not much money. And this patient accepted because she was uh, always accompanied night by by uh, her uh, daughter, and they did. Um, I don't know if you know it, a litchi. A litchi pot on internet. So uh, the family, the friends, and all uh, give, gave uh, some money to uh, so that the, the patient and, uh, uh, could pay for the test. Uh, I will show you the, the results of the test. And uh, what we did after the test is we challenge with PEMPRO uh, immunotherapy because, uh, as I will show you, the immunogram uh, showed probably an, an effect for immunotherapy. But as you see, uh, it, uh, at three months, she was progressive. And the test showed us also that she could be sensible to uh, 5U or Xeloda, capecitabine. And now she is on treatment uh, on uh, capecitabine, and she's doing well. There is no sign of progression, and, um, and, and the, the treatment is uh, very well tolerated. So diagnosis in June, June 215 um, with brain metastasis. And for the moment, she has an overall survival of 31 months and stable disease. What I will do for the next progression is Everolimus. I show you now the results of OncoDNA. Here are the um, um, screen capture of, uh, our real, of the real results for this patient. Uh, we confirmed it was non-smell cell, non -smell cell, uh, cell lung cancer. Uh, uh, we didn't find any uh, driver gene because she, she, this patient had no um, gen genomics at uh, diagnosis because, as I will tell you uh, later, it's quite difficult still in France to have access to uh, genomic platforms. Uh, and the pa package plus uh, gave us uh, some inf uh, information because if you look here at the treatments, you see that she was only sensible at diagnostic and diagnosis for two chemotherapy treatments. And uh, even the, if the immunogram showed no, uh, no PDL1 overexpression, the fact that she is CD8 overexpressed could uh, give uh, gave us the opportunity to rechallenge the, the patient. So here you have the what what is most interesting for me as a clinical oncologist uh, uh, working in a private practice practice no, no university and having no access for the moment to a molecular board. Um, what what my interest is what how can I treat this patient? So uh, as you see, the the patient was 
uh, um, probably probably not uh, um, sensible to taxane based chemotherapy. She had taxane chemotherapy, but um, associated to to radiation therapy. Uh, gemcitabine is a treatment where probably I would have proposed to the patient after the, the, the second failure, but you see that probably uh, this uh, treatment will not uh, help the patient. Met inhibitor are not, um, not uh, useful, at, uh, and uh, there is no uh, driver gene, driver gene uh, um, for this patient. And uh, so, on the basis of these treatments, of, of these results, for, uh, forgive me, I tried Xeloda, and next uh, next progression, I probably uh, try uh, an mTOR inhibitor. The second patient is a typically patient where I think the test was not helpful. Um, the patient, the patient was a breast cancer. A patient with a PT3PN uh, negative M0 at presentation. She was uh, hormone positive and HER2 negative. And uh, the, the, the treatment at presentation was surgery, radiation therapy, and examistane for, uh, for five years, as you see here. She had a, a first time to failure, treat, the time to treatment failure of 60 months. Then she presented with only bone metastasis. She had a treatment with fulvestron denosumab. And at that moment, Eberolumus was available in France. So as she was not uh, responding on, um, on biology, on the, on the tumor markers, I decided to, uh, to add Eberolumus uh, for, the, for this patient. And you see that she had only uh, nine months time to failure uh, for with this line of treatment. Then I tried capecitabine and denosumab, six months, minorelbine, three months, apirubilin, seven months. Um, this patient, uh, nine months ago, was, I discussed with her, with her the possibility to make an oncoselect. But for um, many reasons, not only money reasons, not financial reasons, but also um, they didn't um, understand what uh, what uh, is the use of this test. Uh, they decided uh, with her husband not to do it. And it's only when uh, I was on one, two, three, four, five, fifth line that uh, she accepted to 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 make the test. Um, and uh, here are the results. As you know, on OncoSelect, uh, there is no. Uh, it's it's only done on a liquid bio biopsy. Uh, because this lady was treated uh, more than uh, uh, eight years uh, eight years ago, and we can't use the first uh, biopsy, and uh, uh, I decided not to re biopsy the patient. Uh, and you and you see that this lady was al uh, always uh, sensible to hormonal therapy, pyrocyclib, but. She was uh, she was not sensible to Eberolumus. Probably it explains why Eberolumus uh, didn't work. And I suppose uh, that this uh, time to failure of 12 months is due to fulvestron and not to Eberolumus. So uh, on the on this result, I decided to introduce balbociclib because balbociclib is now av available in France for three months ago. Uh, but as you see, it didn't work much because she uh, rapidly uh, tumor we show uh, we see we saw a tumor growth and uh, we tried one month of uh, weekly paclita cell and finally she she was dead um, the third patient i will discuss with you is patient 15 and probably what i think it's uh, the better the best patient to uh, uh, to to propose the onco, onco DNA testing. She's a patient of 42 years uh, now. Uh, women, she began her, um, to be ill in 2013. She presented with a T25 oh, T2 uh, centimeter tumor of the central right, right breast and was treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy 
with the protocol uh, PAX01, uh, three, uh, three courses of uh, FIC, uh, FEC 100 and three taxoterms. She had a good partial response uh, and then tre was treated with lumpectomy and axillary dissection, radiotherapy, and tamoxifen uh, until uh, September 2017 when she uh, presented with lung metastasis, a uh, visceral crisis with no, with uh, also bone metastasis, uh, no liver or brain metastasis, and she had uh, very, very uh, shortness of breath. So I decided to treat her with uh, Taxol, you see here, she, and ovarian ob ablation by radiation. And she is now uh, nine, on nine months uh, on, on treatment with, uh, with uh, Paclitaxel weekly. This patient accepted to do, to do the test at first line. And here are the results. Uh, she is uh, uh, not BRCA1, BRCA2, uh, um, and there is no driver gene uh, evident, evident. And what showed uh, us the, the test also is there is no, um, for me, no, no, no action of immunotherapy. Here are the treatments, and you see that uh, five few, she had five few, no problem. Uh, Taxan-based chemotherapy, she had taxoter. Here are the treatments that are not available in France for the moment. You have one receptor inhibitors and dual P3K uh, mTOR inhibitors. She is, and probably this, is, this explains why, uh, uh, why there is a, such a short uh, TTF at presentation, she she is um, not sensible to uh, anthracyclines. She is not sensible, probably to CD4, CD, CD4, CD6. Probably this patient, if she had not had a visceral cri crisis, I would have treated her with fibrociclib at first intent, and probably uh, mTOR inhibitors uh, will be uh, active. I show you this uh, this photo. Uh, Virginie, uh, it's her full name, accepted that I show you uh, this photo to show you that even if Dunkirk there is not much money, uh, she is an employee and uh, her husband is a, a worker in a plant. Uh, the, um, they, many 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 of her friends uh, uh, try to help her. First, she received from from the uh, the industry uh, the, where uh, works uh, is, is uh, her husband, uh, a reimbursement of all of the tests. The, uh, all the employees of the, of the society gave uh, 50, 10, 10 euros, and uh, the, the, boss, the, the boss of the, of the plant uh, uh, made, made the difference so that uh, she, she was reimbursed of the test by, uh, by uh, the co-workers of her husband. But she's also a singer in a band. And, and uh, of course, in uh, nine, nine months ago, she was unable to, 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 uh, to sing because of the shortness of her breast. So she had lung lymphangiitis. She had many, many uh, doses of corticosteroids. And, now, and nine months later, eight months later, she, she returned on stage to sing. It was the, fin the final song of a charity uh, concert that uh, the diatonic, uh, her band, decided to, uh, to do for her to uh, pay the test for another patient. Problem is that the, benef the benefits of the, of the, of the show uh, it, it are not, it is not enough to pay a next, uh, a next test. But you sh in Dunkerque, the, what we call the spirit of Dunkerque, uh, is very interesting because uh, even if there's not a lot of money, we, the patient uh, will find um, um, solidarity to, to pay for the test. So for, um, for Virginie, what, what I do now is stop Paclitaxel. I phone to Oncodeina to, 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 to verify that she is eczemistain uh, sensible. And uh, so I decided to switch uh, to do a switch maintenance with Dexamistan. And when she will be in second line, uh, in second line treatment at progression, I will first try Evolimus, and then 
if the limus uh, doesn't work uh, at the next next time i will use uh, xeloda and no pyrobocyclib because if i had not had the results of the test i would have tried pyrobocyclib uh, by uh, this patient the last patient i will focus with you before the discussion is the patient 16 she's a 69 69 year old patient uh, um, that is uh, set, uh, at presented um, 30, uh, 50 months ago with a neuroendocrine tumor, probably of pancreatic origin, um, with liver metastasis. She was the uh, uh, first diagnostic at the University Hospital of, uh, of Lille, and uh, they sent us back the patient uh, because they couldn't do anything, uh, and, and they, they send us uh, this patient to our palliative care unit. Uh, we decided to, to treat the patient, and we treated the patient 50 months ago with cisplatin uh, VP16 uh, for, for uh, courses of chemotherapy, and then we treated her with ocreotid. Uh, she was first in partial re response, um, she was dying uh, when she she came in the in our unit, and uh, two months later she was living well, PS zero, and uh, after six months of opioid uh, total remission, uh, complete remission of her met uh, liver metastasis. Then the the, the, the treatment failed so 36 months after. She was uh, treated uh, with uh, Folfox and and um, continue, continuation of ocreotid. We made a bi biopsy at this moment, a new biopsy, because uh, she had only one uh, metastasis that, was, that had recurred, and we, we thought it was another, another cancer. But um, unfortunately, this, uh, the biopsy showed again the, that it was a neuroendocrine neuro tumor. So, uh, she just uh, accepted uh, to do the test, and as it as it is usual for this patient, and you see here treatment associated with potential clinic be benefit, nothing. Uh, uh, probably she was sensible to platinum-based chemotherapy at first presentation be be because she was on um, complete remission after uh, four courses of cisplatin. Uh, and now on the re-biopsy, there is uh, probably um, uh, an insensitivity to this treatment. So it probably explain also why Folfox doesn't work very well, because she was only in partial remission, and as you see, for 14 months. Uh, and there is no other treatment, perhaps, perhaps, uh, mTOR inhibitors, Everolimus, and so, and it's 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 why it's very um, very interesting to 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 have uh, um, this test with Onco DNA. Uh, there is one uh, clinical trial in Italy, a phase two, uh, that that is testing uh, Everolimus with metformin. This uh, this um, this trial is uh, uh, is ongoing yet. Uh, of course, the patient doesn't want to go to Italy, and I'm not sure she would be accepted in the, in the, the trial. So we decided, we decided to treat this patient with uh, Evorolimus and metformin, and I will share on the platform what, uh, what, uh, how this treatment will work in several months. So on the, uh, what about this experience? There are pros and cons for this, for the Onconda DNA testing. The first, uh, the first interest for me for, for to work with onco DNA testing is the avail availability. Uh, in France, there are uh, about uh, 20 genomic platforms. They are usually in the university hospitals, and it's very very difficult to uh, to ask these uh, genomic platforms to do terranostics for patients that are not uh, in uh, in the national um, trials. So. I, and I never uh, um, could send a patient to the platform. Uh, only um, only um, lung cancer patients are 
uh, or some uh, some gynecological uh, some breast cancer BRCA1 BRCA2 but uh, it's very difficult to 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 do genomics for patients that are not uh, um, eligible for for uh, for trials a very good workflow um, now we'll, in 10 days we can have uh, the, the results white panel of genes and what is very interesting for me as a clinician as an oncologist is the specific immuno uh, histology uh, testing so that uh, i can really really um, choose uh, the best uh, treatment for the patient also the immunogram the immunogram uh, for the moment uh, gave me the opportunity to re-challenge one patient um, and probably and uh, if i find uh, some somebody for instance uh, a breast cancer or colon rect colorectal cancer which shows pdl1 uh, overexpression i will try to, um, to 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 send this patient to a uh, uh, an access trial uh, for immunotherapy. It offers solutions at, uh, for the patients and for for the oncologist because I think, and I will rediscuss re discuss this later. Uh, I'm I think for most of the patient, young patients, we have to do the test uh, at first line because it it can really give us uh, the best strategy of treatment. Uh, probably in breast cancer, it helps to define sequential treatment strategy. I, I uh, recall you that 50% of life during metastatic, metastatic evolution is linked to efficacy of first-line treatment. So you have, you have to find the best first-line treatment for the patient because 50% of all the overall survival for this patient uh, will, will be due to the first, the first choice. There are problems. There is no re reimbursement in France, um, so it's you have to choose. The, the, uh, I have to to discuss with the patients, and it makes it takes a lot of time uh, because um, uh, they have to explain what what's what's the use of uh, of the testing, uh, and uh, so we have to select patients on fi financial wellness. I assure you that on the 17 patients that were uh, tested for the moment, only one was uh, well on, this, on the fin fin financial uh, welfare. Uh, most of the patients had uh, were uh, from had not much money, and and even even uh, for this, uh, they they accepted to, to do the test. Uh, what is more difficult for me is the ability to understand. Um, it's difficult for the when the patient is on at first line to explain her or he, or, or here or he that uh, he will at the moment as I hope the um, later the later possible uh, the treatment will fail so we have to uh, to look for second third four four five lines of treatment. And when you when the patient is on first line, it's very difficult to explain uh, and to make him make this un understand. Uh, and most patients think it's a treatment, so we have really to to explain to the patient that it's not not a treatment, but it uh, does allow us to uh, to uh, to, cho to choose the best treatment. And probably we have to make selection of type of cancer. On day-to-day -day practice, uh, what are accelerators? What are brakes? Accelerators, patients look at internet. They share on uh, on discussion. Uh, they, 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 there is a lot of, um, of of news in the papers, at the TV, and especially after the ASCO meeting. Uh, that and and one one of these uh, new uh, news is precision medicine, and and patients begin to ask, and especially young patients, to to have access to precision medicine. They discuss advantages and disadvantages of treatment with the physician. Uh, I must, I'm practicing re, uh, radiation and oncology now for 30 years, and I assure you that 30 years ago, the people were not discussing treatments, and now now the patient is a real 
health actor and a partner of decision. And accelerators, and I think even in France, will be the cost of new treatments. Uh, Everolimus palbociclib, 2,000, uh, nearly 3,000 euros per month. Cabozantinib, more than 5,000 euros per month. Nivolubab, and all the, all the immunotherapy, more than 5,000 euros per month. Um, I don't know, uh, I, I think it's not, it's not ethical uh, to, to, pay, to pay for treatments um, at, at this uh, level uh, if you don't know if it, if it works or not. Uh, um, often we will, uh, for instance, now Palbociclib is, is uh, available in, in France uh, largely since three months, and many, many patients receive this treatment and, um, and, and I think it will be uh, very difficult to, to pay for them uh, in the, the years they are coming without uh, having a test. The breaks, financial, need to find solutions uh, until the, the test is reimbursed, crowdfunding, uh, pot and etc. solidarity. Um, so it's uh, difficult to, for the patient uh, to make the decision to accept the test. Uh, many doctors, physicians say there is a lack of evidence-based medicine yet. Uh, of course, uh, when you see the Moscato uh, results, uh, and finally, uh, it helps only 2% of the patient. Uh, but uh, as 2% is, is when you see the many, many patients having a cancer, it it's make, makes a lot of patients in, in, uh, on the, on, in France and uh, in the world. It probably, there is a problem with availability of drugs. Um, some new drugs are, are only uh, labeled for, uh, for uh, some, some treatments for some patients. The quality of results, uh, re there was at the ASCO meeting uh, this, uh, this year, a discussion about the reproducibility of, uh, of uh, testing uh, between uh, laboratories. When to make it, first, second, third lines of treatment? Uh, changes changes in practice par paradigm. Uh, now we have to uh, to to ask for molecular uh, testing to to treat to treat or not uh, uh, to change to, to treat or not or to to to, ch to choose the, the treatment. There is a risk in prescribing out of license. Um, of course, when you have uh, found a treatment that uh, will work, probably. Uh, as, uh, for patients, uh, as uh, the physician will perhaps prescribe it out of license, and so there is a risk uh, in France that uh, the national insurance will uh, ask for reimbursement to the patient. Um, there, is, there are difficulties like ac an access to uh, molecular tumor board. Uh, it, for the moment, it's only at the regional cancer center, and access to clinical trials. Trials. Uh, I work with phase one. Uh, um, 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 phase one uh, uh, trials uh, it, it, at Regional Cancer Center, and for the moment, on 12 patients, I asked her to take in phase one treatment uh, trials. Um, there was, were uh, zero patients taken. So, in conclusion, um, in our experience, uh, nine months experience, nearly two patients per month. I think it's useful in 70% of patients. I think it should be proposed to the patient at first line, not probably not at the beginning of the first line, but during the first line, um, first to, 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 to verify that uh, the treatments that you propose in first line works and to prepare, to prepare the second line, surely for breast cancer and rare tumors, probably for colon, colon cancer, not sure at all for prostate cancer. It's a specific cancer, um, perhaps for very young patients, but not surely not for all prostate cancer. And for lung cancer, Theranostic is available in France on regional molecular biology platforms. And normally all the patients uh, uh, for this uh, lung cancer are treated after uh, Theranostic. So I thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Wagner. We will uh, look at the question. Oh, no. 
interesting stuff. We are waiting for, for a question. We have a question for you, Dr. Ragnar. Um, um, regarding, um, um, I will I will read the question. I would like to come back on when performs a type of molecule profiling, and I would like to have your feeling. Do you think it should be done after first line when the patient is relapsing for most of cancer type? And, and the first line for rare cancer type. Um, I, I think I think the as I told told you during the presentation, I think we have to prepare the the, the patient to the possibility of the test uh, at first line. Um, uh, as I told you, probably not for all the all the types of cancer. I think uh, for breast cancer, it's very important to define the best strategies uh, because for breast cancer, we have uh, in France the opportunity to treat the patient uh, for six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines of treatment. And uh, as I told you, uh, the, the overall survival is the best when you, you treat the patient with the best treatment at first, second line. So uh, I think uh, for breast cancer patients, uh, more they are young, of course, more they we have to, to propose the test. It's uh, at first line. Um, in my experience now, the difficulty is, is until the test is, uh, is reimbursed, is to explain to the patient that she is relapsing, that we have a lot of treatments to propose, that it not, it's not because she's relapsing that she will die in uh, three, six months, uh, and most of the patients will have five, six, seven, eight years of living with metastasis, so we have to find the best treatment uh, the sooner possible. And um, I, th I think the best would be to, 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 begin, to begin the first line after the test, but it's not possible, I think it's not possible for the moment, and so um, we have, I think we have to begin treatments. Uh, of course, there is no, I have only nine patients, but um, probably the best first line treatment uh, for me will be a Texan based uh, chemotherapy because uh, we have uh, more often anthracycline resistance for the patients. So I think you, you can begin with, uh, with, uh, Texan, uh, with Texan treatment. And uh, if there is a visceral crisis, and then after, uh, at three, between three, the third and the sixth months of of, uh, of the treatment, when we see if the treatment will work, or, 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 or uh, often at three to six months, we will have uh, an idea of it, if it works or not, uh, to propose the test at this moment. Um, surely, after the third line, is it's not uh, not useful. So. Um, and for rare, rare cancer tumors, of course, uh, I think if we, we have to, to, to do it before the first line. But rare tumors, uh, probably what we will we plan to do for the next months is, is to present these patients to the tumor board, uh, to the molecular tumor board, to ask if uh, the, the patient will be uh, taken in the platform and so he has no, nothing to pay or uh, to propose the uh, oncodena testing. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Um, can we use oncodena testing in multiple myeloma? I can't respond to this question because I'm not doing hematology. And so, sorry, I, I can't. I can't really. Uh... Okay. No. Uh, we have another question. How expensive is the test in France? Uh, 
It's, um, the Don't go straight and go is five thousand, nearly five five thousand euros. Do you have any experience with prostate cancer? Uh, one patient, one patient, but um, um, I think it's uh, probably due to the to the how we say the, the biology of the tumor and and. And many treatments that exist or really exist. I, I, I don't know if uh, for, for the moment the DNA, oncodina testing in Terranostics is helpful in, in prostate cancer, probably for very young patients. Uh, probably if uh, a patient uh, is uh, 50, 60 years old, uh, having, a, a PS, uh, having a very high load of, of, uh, of metastasis and probably for neuroendocrine um, changes, I will propose it, but almost of, uh, all of our patients are 70, 18 years old, and I don't, I'm not sure it will help. Okay. Um, how do you choose the best solution for your patient individually? How do you choose the best? Um, not sure, not sure I understand the question, but um, in fact, in fact, uh, when I when I have the test, the results of the test, uh, of course, I will I will first try uh, treatments that are available and reimbursed in France. Um, for instance, uh, if, if you look at Virginie cases, for for me, it's a paradigm of of what, how to use uh, diagnostics. Um, I, uh, the, the, the strategy that I will use is really uh, first first on what is available. Um, then after, if I have used all the available uh, therapy, therapies, I will look if the patient is um, eligible for a f um, uh, f first phase one or phase two uh, trial, clinical trial. It's very difficult to, to, to propose these clinical trials for the patients because um, often they don't understand what, what it is. And, and uh, we, we work in, uh, in the peripheral, peripheral um, center. So they have to go either to Lille, either to Paris or to Lyon. And that it's difficult for the patient. And uh, and now most of, even for the phase one uh, trials, the uh, eligible criteria are very strict. And as I told you, for twelve patients that I proposed a phase one trial, uh, there was uh, zero acceptation. After that, if I have tried all the avail available therapies, I will discuss with the patient, uh, for instance. Um, in two cases of my uh, series, there is probably an activity of uh, cabometics. Cabometics is available and reimbursed in France only for renal cell cancer. So I explained to the patient, probably, pro probably we can use this treatment. And I explained uh, uh, the patient that the risk is um, that in these cases, perhaps a national insurance, uh, uh, the case d'assurance maladie, uh, can eventually um, go come to us and see and, and ask us why why we have used this treatment, and so it's not the doctors will be who will reimburse the treatment; it is the patient. So there is there is a risk. It's why we uh, we um, we will try next month to show the patients for the, we have done an oncodynada testing to the molecular board. In the, in the regional cancer center, and and, and in these cases, it will be accepted for uh, reimbursement. Probably there is no, there will be no problem. Um, well, it's, uh, it's how I, t I choose to, to make the choice for the patient. Okay, uh, we have uh, also another question: can, can the test be used for chemotherapy drugs? Yes, of course. 
it's 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 the interest of this test. Uh, um, as, as you probably know, uh, in the USA, uh, Foundation One is now uh, available for reimbursement for many uh, 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 health maintenance maintenance organization. But uh, Foundation One is doing only uh, uh, NGS. And what is uh, um, what OncoDNA uh, brings us is really uh, immunohistochemistry, and uh, and and with these results we can uh, ch uh, choose the, the chemotherapy. Um, for instance, uh, for the breast cancer, for the young breast cancer patients who um, relapsed very quickly after the after the first line uh, first line treatment or adjuvant uh, chemotherapy um, uh, often we see um, that these patients are um, insensitive to to uh, anthracyclines uh, FFU and and taxan so the pax01 was not able to work so yes uh, for me it's 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 more important and I, I understand NGS. I understand uh, uh, all the molecular um, profiling of the patient, but um, as you as you know, in Moscato, in Moscato uh, experience, they found only driver genes, uh, special driver genes, only for, for less than twenty percent of the patient. So it's not not NGS the most important for me. The most important is package plus is uh, immuno -histo, immuno Another question, um, I have got patients asking where they can turn to when their chemo failed, chemotherapy failed. Asking when they turn, can turn to. Mm -hmm. Not sure to understand the question. No. Uh, when they can turn to, to when chemo failed, depends on the line, depends on most, most of... Uh, French patient treated in another current center. I think it's the rest of the question. Ah, okay. Um, perhaps uh, if there are interesting testing, they can uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know if uh, Oncodena will give uh, give uh, the name of oncologist where the, the testing can be done, but why not? Um... I have another question from Dr. Mullier. Do you think it would be useful to do the test in non-metastatic cancer for adjuvant therapy, for example? Not yet, but probably one day. Uh, I think the best package in uh, uh, Tuma, Tuma, is my, uh, Tuma is my associate. So I, I, I say hello to Tuma. Um, I think I think uh, as I told you, I'm an old oncologist, I have 30 years of experience now, and uh, 30 years ago I worked with Professor Lenoir, Professor Favreau, and Professor Thierry Philippe in the Regional Cancer Center of Lyon and the International Agency of Research on Cancer on enemy cover expression, and we try to to find biomarkers that will be uh, targets for uh, biotherapy 30 years ago. And and I, I I was at this time and with the experience I I didn't uh, I didn't believe that one day I will be able to do the, to propose the diagnostics test for my patients and it's it's now available so I think probably in the tech ten next years we um, we we will be able to do molecular profiling for patients at diagnosis, not for all patients, but um, we will probably um, add uh, this test to uh, uh, to mark profiling for predictive prediction to chemotherapy response, as, as you know, on Kutai, on predict, etc. Uh, in France, it's now available, and and many patients have access to this test and probably I hope that in 10 years I, I make a, a proposition. I think that uh, the anatomopathologist, I hope they are 
you know, new anatomopathologist uh, listening to me, uh, their, their work will completely change and probably we do uh, molecular profiling diagnosis at diagnostic of patients. But for the moment, no. We have another question. Would you consider if reimburse for using to monitor? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. If it was reimbursed, I, I think I will propose it for most of my patients in, at first, uh, first relapse and before treating the uh, first line chemotherapy or hormonotherapy or any treatment. And uh, probably uh, I, will, uh, I will propose uh, more often rebiopsy. Re um, the, the problem of the rebiopsies for, for looking for heterogeneity of tumors of metastasis is very important. I think it's, we, we, should, we, we should propose this rebiopsy for most, many, many patients, uh, but the problem is the access on for, of, for the biopsies, for radiology uh, units that are um, skilled in, in rebiopsies, in biopsies. And after, of course, it's uh, the, uh, the access to the molecular biology uh, and re reimbursement. But, but uh, I think probably um, when, the, when the test will be reimbursed, uh, I will propose for all the patients uh, that relapse a biopsy of one metastasis to make a new uh, and to compare the uh, molecular profile of primary and of the metastasis. And of course, uh, on the liquid biopsy, and probably um, if we have more and more biomarkers, to make a liquid biopsy, a liquid biopsy uh, more often, and, um, and probably uh, uh, we I will propose uh, uh, to to look for the efficacy efficacy of treatment uh, on on, on the radiology, of course, and on the molecular bi biopsy, liquid biopsy, to to see if it works or not, and and probably at second relapse, third relapse propose first um, to, 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 to test on the liquid biopsy. Um, how does the Unco range compare to those offered by other companies? Oh, I don't know, because <laughs> uh, for me in Europe, there is uh, yes. only Oncodena, so I can't uh, we, we I are, can't compare. Yes, Oncodena uh, combine tests um, regarding uh, immunochemistry and, um, and NGS and other uh, tests to propose um, integrated tests. Um, another question. Um, Is chemotherapy guidance an important factor for choosing oncodiene? Yes, it's the first. It's for me, the first uh, reason to, cho to, to, to choose oncodiene, of course, because um, as as you know, uh, we we won't find the many many uh, driver genes in breast cancer and most of the cancer cancer. So. Uh, the interest to do NGS and, and immunochemistry is immunochemistry first to, to, for instance, in many of the nine of the patients, uh, most of the patients I, I, I do the test in breast cancer, many of the patients were um, resistant to, to hormonotherapy, to anti-aromatized tamoxifen. And, uh, and, and so it, it was important to for me to, to know that fulvestron, for instance, is still working, and so I go on with fulvestron and change chemotherapy or do biotherapy and maintain the fulvestron. Another question: Is that recommended for thyroid cancer? I th I think uh, yes. For me, it's a rare, a rare tumor that would um, in uh, in France and, uh, these these uh, patients are. Uh, are concentrated in the, the regional cancer center in, the, in rare tumor boards, and probably we have to. Uh, and these patients are taken you know, on on the, the platforms, and then the NGS is, is doing is done on you know, the platforms. Yes. 
we have a lot of questions. Yeah. For the patient four, would the result have been more useful here in the treatment lines? Um, patient four up. Patient four was. I, I told I to lose this, this patient. For me, uh, the the test was done too late, and there is another problem that uh, the tumor is uh, uh, the first biopsy was uh, and the tumor the tumor uh, the tumor was available uh, for more than eight years before. So the test immunohistochemistry NGS is not possible on on this uh, uh, for this patient. So it was only a onco select so liquid biopsy. And um, what 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 was uh, uh, how would you say uh, uh, strange is that she was still sensitive to to hormonal therapy for all the hormonal therapy and for bibrocyclic. So I think uh, probably for this patient, uh, her two negative uh, old quite old patients. With a long, long uh, follow-up, long time to uh, to treat and failure, um, I think probably this patient uh, would most benefit of uh, a rebiopsy. Probably, uh, uh, probably for this patient now, uh, uh, if she accepts the test, I would propose a, a rebiopsy, a rebiopsy for to, to do the test on uh, on the metastasis. Have you used any other commercial provider? How does Onconea compare? I'm working in France and I'm, no, I, <laughs> I know only Onconea now. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I have another question about breast cancer patient. Um, why do you think, especially breast cancer patients, should be tested? In my region, physicians do not see the benefit for testing breast cancer patients. Um, yes, it's a discussion we have uh, often. Uh, the problem for me is that um, until now we had uh, many chemotherapy, we had many uh, hormonal therapy uh, before the, the availability of uh, mTOR and anti-CDK4, um, we all do, uh, I would say, uh, um, uh, oncology, uh, it's not evidence-based oncology, it's, uh, it's uh, doctor-based doctor medicine. Uh, many, many uh, doctors uh, believe that anthracyclines are better, others say it's taxans, others say it's uh, a few xeroda, etc. Uh, I think uh, really for young patients, probably more of for, for young patients who have who have failed rapidly after the uh, the adjuvant chemotherapy, adjuvant treatment, uh, you have often a resistance to taxane, a few or uh, anthracyclines on the, the the first biopsy on the on the on the primary. So it explains why the patient uh, probably uh, relapse. And uh, you have five, six, seven lines of treatment. So uh, you, how can you, ch how will you do the choice for the treatment, for the line of treatment? Um, uh, now, now, because it's new, because, because the, the results are very good for pyrocyclic, of course, and I, I speak only for pyrocyclic because it's only uh, available in France. Um, every every patient now uh, with uh, HER2 negative uh, um, uh, re hormonal receptor positive patients who are not uh, um, in, in visceral crisis will have pyrocyclic without the test. And my short experience shows me that often uh, the patients are um resistance natively resistance to uh, to uh, to anti cd cd k4 patient uh, treatments so you will do three six nine months of treatment uh, because the patients uh, go slow the metastasis goes slowly there is no uh, real uh, 
progressive treatments. Um, the tumor marker is stable or goes slowly, goes slowly down. Um, you, you make the treatment with fulvestrone second line or with examistane first line. How do you know if it's examistane who works? How do you know if it's CD, uh, palbocyclic who works? With the test, with when the patient is uh, uh, resistant to, to CD, CDK4 treatment, uh, why why are will you use uh, this treatment and and it will cost uh, I say twenty thousand thirty thousand thousand uh, euros before you stop the treatment. So uh, I think it's it's uh, um, personalized this type of medicine of precise medicine is the best treatment for the best patients at the at the uh, at the good moment at the good dose if it's possible. So I think, I, think, uh, I think we have to change paradigms. I will come back to the question um, about, about uh, where patient can uh, be addressed. Um, the patient can, um, can, uh, can be uh, addressed to OncoDNA or to ask um, to their oncologist some information about our test. Okay, I think uh, we answer all questions. All question. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so a question from a French colleague. <laughs> uh, why, uh, why, why I don't address my patients to the INCA platforms? I don't know if you find it. Um, I don't know where, it, where this colleague works, but it's very, very difficult for us when we work at peripheral center to address this patient to the, to the Inca platforms, because we have first to go to the tumor board, the, the molecular tumor board, uh, the, the patient has to be accepted for, for testing and, and often it takes a long time. So it's quicker, quicker to propose for uh, testing with Oncodena. We have a, a last question of the province oncologist to adapt to testing. Oh. Very, very good. Very you know. good question. <laughs> very good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I will re re respond uh, like a radio therapist. Uh, uh, many, many, many French centers. It was difficult to 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 to, to change the, the machines because many, many of the radio therapists was radio radio radiation oncologists were not. Uh, uh, didn't believe that uh, VMAT uh, IMRT was better than uh, conformal, conformal radiotherapy. And, and 20 years ago, many radiation oncologists were, were not believing that uh, uh, 3D, 3D uh, conformal radiotherapy was better than uh, cobalt therapy. So, so I think, I think. Uh, the, the day where, when uh, the test will be reimbursed, uh, all the oncologists will believe the test. Mm -hmm. well, yes. But the, there is an ethical point of view. Should we wait until it was it is reimbursed? Uh, if the patient is okay to pay, why why shouldn't we uh, propose the test for the patient? And and the the the, the idea is to find perhaps one of 20 uh, patients where there will be a, a mutation on the driver gene. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't know, a mutation in the EGFR receptor on a breast cancer who, who would uh, respond to, to uh, anti-EGFR EGF, treatment. Why, why not propose the test when, when the, the innovation is available? Okay. Okay. Thank you for Thank listening. You, Thank you for the questions. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Have a nice day.